NVIDIA has released their major update for RTX Remix to coincide with the epic Half-Life 2 RTX demo. And this demo is essentially the first ever third-party remaster of a game using NVIDIA's Remix tools. It wasn't done by the original developers or even NVIDIA themselves. And on a technical level, the results are beyond impressive, especially considering how Remix works without touching any of the base game code. Today, I wanna to take a look at what Remix's 1.0 update can do. Now I'd like to give NVIDIA a shout out for sponsoring this video and getting me early access to the Half-Life 2 demo. This has been a really cool partnership that arose from NVIDIA just noticing all my content covering Remix and saying, hey, would you like some behind the scenes access? And I've been able to chat with the devs who have been working on the Half-Life 2 remaster and just like getting the nitty gritty of everything that they're doing and what's going on behind the scenes. Now, if you've never heard of Remix before, it's a new NVIDIA tool that redefines the way we can mod and remaster old games. Instead of having to get stuff like the source code or hack into old game files, Remix can replace assets, lighting, textures, and even add volume metrics at runtime without having to change any of the First game's day. base code. And not only does it replace assets, but it replaces them with the most modern rendering pipelines available, allowing for incredible materials that showcase depth mapping and subsurface scattering, ray trace lighting leading to incredibly immersive environments, and all of the DLSS features that you could ever want. The end result can be a completely reimagined visual style and overhaul for some of your favorite games. And Half-Life 2 by Orbifold Studios showcases what can be achieved in a game that's now over two decades old. And it can be kind of funny because booting up this game for the first time and Half-Life 2 RTX looked kind of like my brain remembered playing the original one. That is until you boot up the original Half-Life 2 and realize just how much upscaling your nostalgia does. The comparative difference is truly astounding. The materials, lighting, and upgraded assets make Half-Life 2 look like a game that might have come out this year. And a lot of that has to do with some of the new features that came out in the 1.0 release. 1.0 adds support for DLSS 4 with multi-frame generation and all of the upscaling performance boosts. There's a new ray reconstruction transformer model that helps further improve upscaling and denoising quality. You can now enable NVIDIA's reflex low latency tools to improve your latency in game. There's now support for subsurface scattering on the skin of characters with RTX skin that just looks insane. They have improved RTX volumetrics that can replace smoke and fog in the games with better looking smoke and fog. A new texture streaming system that dynamically optimizes VRAM usage for better FPS and tons of other performance improvements. Now the Half-Life 2 RTX project is insanely impressive, but getting this far takes a pretty big effort to make new physically based textures, update the models, add in all the lighting and tweak it, and everything else that goes into a full remaster. But how does an untouched game look when you first inject Remix? In previous videos, I've looked at older games like Unreal Tournament, but I was able to get access to a new game, or rather a new old game this time around, Left 4 Dead 2. I have a mod installed that includes the necessary wrapper and some basic Remix configuration tweaks, but other than that, this is the bare minimum to get Remix working. There's no new assets added to the game, just the base level ray trace lighting that comes stock with with Remix. And honestly, the results on some of the maps are stunning. The lighting on this map in particular just gives the game a super realistic look at a glance. Now on closer inspection without having physically based textures added means that the realism kind of breaks down when you're looking up close, but it's still crazy how good games can look with just Remix out of the box. And to be clear, I don't mean to imply that just injecting ray trace lighting into any game is going to make it look better than the original. Obviously, lighting is an art form in itself, so everything needs to be tweaked and adjusted to make things look good, but you have the tools to make everything look better. And honestly, it's kind of addicting because you get in there, you want to start adjusting stuff, and then you go, well, I could just replace this material with something else and this asset with a better looking asset, and all of a sudden, you're fully modding a game. And when you do put in the effort to overhaul everything, the results speak for themselves. And that's what Orbifold have done with Half-Life 2. They're using the new RTX skin feature, which is crazy impressive. 
that adds ray traced subsurface scattering to skin and other translucent materials. These head crabs, for example, without that subsurface scattering look a little bit more flat and one dimensional. But when you set up subsurface scattering, all sorts of details like veins and moisture become visible. It recreates the effect of light bouncing around and through skin, something you don't really think about that much. But when you hold up a flashlight to your hand and can see the light actually transitioning through your hand, you go, oh, wow, there's a huge amount of tech that goes into making something look truly realistic. And that's what's been added to Half-Life. The new RTX volumetrics tool also lets you modify the conditions of whatever haze, fog, or smoke effects are present in the game by increasing or decreasing the density of them. It comes with a bunch of presets that really emphasize the effect, or you can go in and fully configure it to your heart's content. Now, having worked with prior releases of Remix, a huge change that I noticed and appreciated right away was the user interface updates. There's a new stage manager panel that automatically categorizes all of the various models, lights, textures, and more into a cohesive browser. This is a massive quality of life improvement that makes finding individual assets much faster. So if I wanted to find a specific light, for instance, I could just click through the lights listed in the stage manager to find it. This will speed up modding significantly. Now, a really cool feature of Remix is that it works in similar ways to the existing mod scene. Anyone with the Half-Life 2 RTX demo can open it up with Remix, go in and tweak what Orbifold have done. And in fact, that's literally what's happening with people releasing their own config files files for it to adjust some of the volumetrics or the lighting in a way that they think is better. So basically nobody is locked into whatever technical or artistic decisions Orbifold have made with their remaster. Much like the current modding scene where people can combine mod packs together and create their best version of a complete game overhaul, you can do a similar thing with Remix. And the craziest thing about it is that you can actually run Remix on top of modded projects so you could take a game that's been modded has its mod packs apply remix on top of those mod packs for like this extra layer of visual fidelity and i'm really excited to see what happens when the modding community gets deep with both remix and the traditional way of modding now playing around in the Half-Life 2 demo, I'm absolutely blown away by just what Orbifold have achieved. Just comparing the ground and wall textures, it's crazy how much more detail has been added to the game. While still fitting Half-Life 2's original aesthetic, everything feels like it's what Valve would have designed if they had the rendering horsepower to do so. Now that said, there's been a bunch of community feedback about the lighting, especially when it comes to Ravenholm with it being too light or distracting. There's a lot of nuance that goes into lighting to attract characters to specific areas of maps. And some people are saying it doesn't really adhere to the original vision of the game. And with that in mind, I wanted to see how easy it would be to update this. So I went in and started tweaking a handful of the brighter spotlights and turning the overall brightness down just to give it a moodier look. It was so incredibly easy where before a community could be like, Meh, I don't like the way that this looks. It's now so easy to change. You could quite literally change the lighting in just about the same amount of time. Time it takes you to write a detailed analysis of why you might not like the lighting. So stepping back to look at this whole package, Remix 1.0 is some darn impressive tech. It's quite literally using some of the best ray tracing and material rendering tech that's available to anyone on the market, creating a fun but also kind of weird juxtaposition of some of the best graphics available injected into some of the oldest games. The whole platform is open source, so modders can can really get into the inner workings and tweak it to work with even more games or add new features. And Half-Life 2 RTX feels like it could be a real catalyst moment for this tech, hopefully showcasing to a massive audience just how good a 20 plus year old game can look with a remix graphics overhaul. And we've actually already started to see some of this happen. I'd be curious to hear what games you might wanna see get the Half-Life 2 RTX treatment. Let me know in the comments. And if you want more information on Remix, check out the links in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like, subscribe for more content like it, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.